So, thank you. Um, so today um, we are going to speak about one aspect of uh, partial hyperbolicity, which is uh, robust transitivity. Okay. So, uh, on the first day, uh, Sylvain explained a certain dichotomy uh, that was useful to decompose the dynamics. And so, there was this dichotomy which said that if f from m to m is a diffeomorphism. In fact, this dichotomy doesn't require the map to be smooth. It's enough to do it for homeomorphisms, but uh, since this is the context we're working in, so there are two possibilities. Either there exists a trapping set which was an open set such that the image of its closure was contained in itself. Or the dynamics is chain recurrent. This meant that for every pair of points, x and y in M, there exists, and, and for every epsilon bigger than zero, there exists an epsilon pseudo orbit from x to y. Okay, remember a pseudo orbit was you had x here, you looked at f of x and you were allowed to make a small shunt, you got x1, and you continued. So something like this. So you could go from wherever you wanted to wherever you wanted via small champs on the dynamics. And so in the, in the first set of exercises, the, the very first exercise was to show this dichotomy. Okay? So essentially what you showed is that the set of points that could be reached from a given point x by epsilon pseudo orbit was a trapping set. And so, if either you had a strict trapping set, or so, so let me say, you an open set, which is non-empty, and it's not the whole manifold, and so either you had such a trapping set, or you could reach everywhere by epsilon pseudo orbits for every epsilon. Okay, and so this is a, is a quite nice description or, or dichotomy regarding the, the dynamics of points for a homeomorphism, but it has uh, certain downsides. Okay, so let me write some downside. And to show, to explain the downside this definition has, let me give one example. So let's consider a dynamics of the circle, which makes the following. So. I don't know if you can understand what this means. I'm, I'm meaning it's a homeomorphism, a diffeomorphism of the circle, which has one fixed point, and every other point is moving in this direction, in a clock counterclockwise direction. Okay? So 
these dynamics do not have any strict trapping set. Okay, so if if you if you took an open set here, so the closure won't get mapped inside itself, and whenever you take some point here, it's moving this in this way, so you won't get any trapping set. So this dichotomy means that this dynamics is chain recurrent, but you, you can also check it directly if you have any pair of points here, x and y, to get from one to the other, you just iterate until you are very close here, you have, you have the, the right to jump epsilon, and so you can go to the other side and, and arrive here. So this, this example is just to show that this is a very weak recurrence property, because as you see here, if you take a point here, it's never coming back if you iterate it really. So you, you don't have a nice uh, recurrence property. So let me try to explain a, a stronger recurrence property which is more interesting to us. And so definition, which we already talked about this, but let's say F is transitive. if it has a dense forward orbit, meaning there exists a point x in m such that the set of future iterates of x is dense in m. Okay, this is much stronger than this property, and as you can see here. Here, this, this dynamics is clearly not transitive. Okay? Whatever point you choose, you make the orbit, and the, and the closure is its orbit and this point. Okay? So the, the question is whether we can improve this dichotomy, at least for most dynamical systems. Okay? So let me state one important result in this direction, which is a theorem by Christian Bonatti and Sylvain, which states the following uh, dichotomy. So there exists a disjoint open set of the space of diffeomorphisms of a manifold, open sets, let's call them OT, sorry, O1 and O2, such that the union is dense and you have the following property. If F belongs to O1, then F has a trapping region and then if F belongs to she inside O2, which is a she delta dense subset, then F is transitive. Okay, so what we are saying is that we, we can improve this result in a at least in an open and dense, in a dense set where we can promote 
the recurrence from chain recurrence to transitivity. Okay? So the, the, the goal of today's lecture I don't know, is to try to explain a joint result with, so it's a, it's a, it's a mixture of joint results. It's Silvan, no, Flavio Abdenur, Silvan, and Martin Sambarino. Where the idea is, is to try to improve in, a, in the partially hyperbolic setting to improve uh, this C delta dense set to an open and dense set. Okay, so to get what we call robust transitivity. So let me state the theorem, which I, I, I won't prove in the morning, I, I will prove it in the, in the afternoon, but just to, to know where, where is the, that we are heading. to one be the set which are uh, globally partially hyperbolic with one dimensional center. And so the theorem the following. So there exists it's essentially the same statement here, only that instead of working in the whole space of diffuse, we are working in the set of partially hyperbolic diffuse, but we can remove this Xi delta set. So, union such that what well, if f belongs to o1 then there exists a trapping set And if F belongs to O2, then F is transitive. Okay? So now, uh, in the rest of this lecture, I will try to explain some, uh, some uh, motivations for this result and some ideas on the on the difficulties to show it okay so in the afternoon i will try to show how to solve these difficulties Let me explain an easy case, okay? The, the easy case is the case of 
and also diffeomorphisms. This meant uh, that f from m to m admits a decomposition of the form Es plus Eu. Okay, it's, it does not have a center direction. Okay, and, and here I'm saying the easy case because we are looking for this uh, weak type of result. So it's a, it's a notorious open problem to, to know whether every anosov diffeomorphism is transitive. However, here we are allowing ourselves to have, make a distinction. Okay? So either there is a trapping set or the anosov uh, diffeomorphism is essentially robustly transitive. Okay? So essentially, let me state this as an as easy proposition. F and also and transitive, then there exists a neighborhood such that for every she in you, she is transitive. Okay, of course, and here there, there is a one-line proof, which is not the one I'm interested in. Is Sylvain told the first day that hyperbolic diffeomorphisms are structurally stable. That means when you make a perturbation, they are topologically conjugate to themselves. So if it's transitive, you make a perturbation, it's still transitive. But I, I will try to explain another proof, which does not use these shadowing properties, just to, to get a taste of how, how do we need to use the stable and unstable directions, and why is it a problem to have a center direction, okay? So, um, proof. So we have here M, and since F is transitive, Let, let me first say the, the following. So, since F is an also, and this follows from what Sylvain did yesterday, it has strong stable and strong unstable manifolds. Okay? And these strong stable and strong unstable manifolds vary continuously as you perturb the diffeomorphism. Okay? So there is a neighborhood such that uh, for every she in U0, one has uniform sized stable and unstable manifolds. OK? This is just the stable manifold theorem that Sylvain explained yesterday. Now what, what do we want to do? We want to apply the hypothesis that F is transitive to get one point that at least visits uh, and uh, so this have uniform size. Let's call this size uh, delta. Okay? So since F is transitive, there is a dense forward orbit. So you can get a, f a finite uh, orbit which visits every neighborhood of size epsilon, with epsilon much smaller than delta. So fix epsilon much smaller than delta. And there exists a finite orbit. And equal 1 to k 
which is epsilon dense. OK? But now, being transitive needs not be a, a, a robust property. OK? You can perturb, make a small perturbation of a transitive diffeomorphism. Uh, an example is the irrational rotation of the circle, so that it's not transitive. However, if you fix a, a finite segment of orbit and you fix a, a, a size of perturbation, you can keep this property for perturbations. So this is a robust property. And now, how do we conclude? So, I should have stated this criteria before. So, exercise, and this will be in the, in the exercise session. So, F is transitive. If and only if, for every U and B open set, there exists an iterate such that Fn of U intersects B. Okay, this, this will be discussed in the tutorial session, but it's a, it's a quite simple equivalence with having a dense orbit, and the the point is that now we want to show for a diffeomorphism which is in this neighborhood but also has this property that it's still transitive. Okay, so how do we do this? We have the manifold here and we, we, we pick any pair of open sets, U and B, which may, may be very, very small. But as we iterate forward the, the set, it will eventually contain an unstable manifold of size delta. Okay? Because you have an unstable manifold, you start iterating, and this unstable manifold gets bigger until it reaches this uniform size delta. Okay? So I iterate Fn1, and I have something which is like this, and this is of size delta. If I iterate backwards this open set, it contains a stable manifold. And stable manifolds get bigger in the past. And so eventually, it contains a stable manifold of size delta, f minus n2, get something like this. And I'm drawing this like this because stable and unstable manifolds are transfers. Okay? Maybe in different places you cannot compare, but the idea is that one is uh, one is getting bigger in the unstable direction. The other one is getting bigger in the stable direction. And now it's the important point of being an oscillator. Stable and unstable complete the whole uh, dimension. So when I ap apply this segment of orbit x that passes from here and goes near here, I, I can transport this manifold to here and get an intersection. OK? So this is. F and three, and so finally, what you get is that F and one plus and two plus and three of U intersects B. Okay, so this is the the, the easy proof of this proposition, and now uh, uh, I hope it's clear that this argument will not be available in the partially hyperbolic setting. Because when I do this, I, I get something which is large in the unstable direction, something which is large in the stable direction. But when I transport this to here, I don't get any intersection. So now, let me explain the, the heuristic idea or previous results that motivate what we will do. Okay. So, so 
So the, the idea of the proof, I, I would try to summarize it in two, two key points. The first point is to obtain a, a certain robust geometric property of the invariant manifolds. by perturbation. Okay, if we, in a certain sense, what, what we have here, we have this invariant foliation, the strong stable, the strong unstable. Typically, they can be very bad for our purposes, but we will make some perturbation, uh, putting us in a, in a certain dense set, where we have a certain robust property of these invariant manifolds. Which is this geometric property? I will explain later. So le le first, let, let me explain the, the, the idea behind this. And then the second po key point is to explain how this property allows us to do, perform the same, essentially the same argument. So try to perform a similar argument. Okay, so uh, the, before I, I enter into the proof, let me explain a quite related result which has the same spirit. Okay, so, so what, what we are trying to do here is to promote a recurrence property into a better one. So let me explain, uh, so we try to improve chain recurrence to transitivity. So let me uh, first start with a, a, a stronger recurrence property. So let's call the non-wandering set of a diffeomorphism is a set of points such that for every epsilon bigger than zero, there exists an iterate such that Fn of Bx epsilon intersects B X epsilon. And so a recurrence property which is uh, stronger than chain recurrence is the following, is that the non-wandering set is the whole manifold. Okay, which if you, if you know something of ergodic theory, when, the, when your diffeomorphism preserves a volume form, this condition is always satisfied. Okay, so this implies chain recurrence. This is an exercise. And so we can wonder how to promote this non-wandering condition into transitivity. Okay, so why is this worse than being transitive? So consider identity on M verifies this. Okay, this, is, this is a recurrence property, but it's, it's a little bit weak. Okay, so the identity has this property. It's not very transitive. And, and so let me explain a geometric, proper, a geometric property of invariant manifolds which allows to promote this condition to transitivity. This, this condition, this geometric condition, is called accessibility. So now I, I won't assume that the center dimension is, is one. Now the, the center dimension can be whatever you want. And so take a partially hyperbolic diffeomorphism, a globally partially hyperbolic diffeomorphism, we say it is accessible if for every two points, x and y in M, you can find a sequence
such that xy, xy plus 1 belong to the same stable or unstable manifold. Okay, so let me make a drawing. This is a very classic, classical drawing. So I'm, these are stable manifolds. These are unstable manifolds. And this is y, this is x, x1. The idea is that you can join any two points by going from stable manifold and stable manifold, stable manifold, and stable manifold. OK, so if you are in the Anosov case, this is a trivial property because going from unstable and stable is, is something that fills up an open set. But here, the unstable and the stable dimensions sum up to be less than the total dimension. So this is a, a non-trivial property. OK, you, you need to go from stable and stable and, and uh, raise the dimension of the points you can reach. But in a, in a certain sense, this is a geometric property. Okay? So let me explain a beautiful argument by, due to Green. Okay, so if we have a partial hyperbolic diffeomorphism which has this property and the non-wandering set is the whole manifold, then we can promote this recurrence property to transitivity. So I will, I will draw the proof. And so the, the idea was that you, you have to start with an open set U and an open set B. And by the exercise we said, to prove transitivity, we need to show that a, a future iterate of this one intersects this one. So let's make this drawing. We, we pick a point here, we pick a point here, and we can start making the drawing. So we have an unstable manifold here, a stable manifold here, an unstable manifold here, finally, a stable manifold here that gets you inside the open set. Okay? So now, what we are going to do, we have the point x here, the point y here, and we wish to show that this open set u starts mimicking, as you iterate forwards, this unstable manifold. Then as you iterate backwards, you want to, like, uh, iterate backwards when you have reached here so that you can follow this direction and then continue doing this until you reach this place. Okay, what, what's the difficulty is that if this were a fixed point, this would be very easy because you take a, an arc of unstable manifold, you iterate forwards, it gets bigger, but the point's still here. But if this point is not fixed, you take this unstable manifold and, and it goes here. So you, you don't have any, any reason to expect that this open set will accumulate on this point. So that's the reason we ask for this property. Okay? So what will happen? We have a sequence of points which have arbitrarily large returns to this ball. And so as you iterate forward, 
you get that the open set here becomes larger and larger in this direction. And now you could say, well, but now you cannot do this starting from this point. But you don't care because you, you take any open set here and as you mimic this, you can push the manifold over here. So the, the idea is to, you continue, you iterate backwards and it goes here and then you iterate forwards and you get that U is over here and eventually you enter the, the side neighbor. Okay, so the, the, the more detailed proof is in the notes. But it was just uh, to explain how a geometric property of the foliations can help you to promote the uh, recurrence properties you were looking for. And so here what, what I explained, this Brin argument plays the role of this uh, part of the strategy, okay? So trying to perform a, an argument uh, like in the Anosov case using this geometric property. So let me explain about this, okay? So it's, it's not something I will do in neither of the two cases, but I would like to state a theorem by Dolgo Piat. Wilkinson that shows that there exists an open and dense, a C1 open and dense subset of a partially hyperbolic dynamics in M, and this open and dense. It's also open and dense when you restrict it to volume preserving ones. So I, I write it down there here. Consisting on uh, accessible diffeomorphisms. Okay, so putting these two results together and using the fact that if you preserve the volume, you have this property, you get as a consequence, as a nice consequence, is that among volume preserving a partially hyperbolic Diffuse uh, transitive ones are open and dense. In the C1 topology. Okay, I, I won't discuss about the, the regularity of these, these uh, perturbations, but just let me say that uh, being C1 open is great, but being C1 dense is not so great, okay? It's easier to be C1 dense than to be CR dense, but being C1 open is great. And there are some results in the direction of uh, improving the topology here for the density. Uh, I just mentioned the one by Hertz, Hertz, and Ures, but you can look for more uh, references in the notes. Okay, in, the, in the case of center dimension one. So now, in the time I have left, I will try to talk about uh, robust transitivity.
Okay, so what what does it mean to be robustly transitive? So a diffeomorphism f in diff one of m is robustly transitive if there exists a neighborhood, a C1 neighborhood of F consisting of transitive diffuse. Okay, and uh, Sylvain explained in the, so what, what is the relationship between robust transitivity and partial hyperbolicity? So Sylvain explained in the, in the first lecture a result by Bonatti, Diaz, and Pujals, which says that robust transitivity implies uh, a weak form of partial hyperbolicity. Okay, so it's volume hyperbolicity. which as the dimension goes down, uh, looks uh, more and more like partial hyperbolicity. Okay, and uh, this, this is continuation of a work by uh, Manier and Liao, and many others, but uh, let me mention this one, which show they, they characterize robust transitivity in dimension two. So in surfaces, Robust transitivity is equivalent to being an also in T2. Okay? Just to state before I continue, uh, an important problem, I, I, I think. So we do know that robust transitivity implies some form of uh, partial hyperbolicity. But we don't really understand uh, robust transitivity as we do in surfaces. So let me pose some, uh, uh, a question, which we don't know the answer is, does S3 admit robustly transitive diffuse? OK, but that, this is just a, a discretion. So let me come back uh, to explaining uh, robust transitivity. So in, we, we've seen that an also, transitive and also diffeomorphisms are always uh, robustly transitive. So the question is, do we have more examples? Or more importantly, do, do we know examples which are not hyperbolic? Okay? And the, the, there has been a long list of, uh, of examples, but I, I would like to come back to the example we explained the other day by Manier. Okay? So Manier's example. Because here we, we will get a taste of the techniques that we will do in the afternoon. <coughs> Sorry. So le, we. I re-explain uh, very quickly how, how we did this example. So we started with FA from T3 to T3, linear and also. We say eigenvalues say lambda 1, smaller than lambda 2, smaller than 1, smaller than lambda 3. OK, so let me draw here. This is, a, this is the space of diffeomorphisms of T3. We start with FA, which is a linear and also. And let me draw the space of an also diffeomorphism. This is a, a very big simplification. And what we did, we started to change the dynamics near a periodic point so that we could leave the space of an of diffeomorphism. But more or less doing all the perturbation in a small region and trying to keep what happened outside of this region. So we did something like this. And here 
Over here, we had many as example. Okay, and the and the drawing we did was something like this. We started in the in the strong stable direction. In the stable direction, sorry, we had this weak eigenvalue associated to uh, eigenline associated to lambda two, and this strong. Uh, Eigenvalue associated to lambda one, and we started to move, and in the end we had something like this. So since the perturbation was made in a small region here, the dynamics outside does not change. So from here you still see something coming in. We didn't touch the fixed point, so we keep this fixed point, but we had made it repulsive in the center direction. So we had something like this. And this, since things are coming in from here, and this is repulsive, it, this forces the, the appearance of two new periodic points, or fixed points, which will be attracting. Okay, and let me draw the stable manifolds, something like this. And so, because I'm kind of lazy, I will, I will not show that this one is robustly transitive. I will show that this one here, the one when, when we leave an of diffeomorphism, is robustly transitive. Because once we show that this one is robustly transitive, we will have a neighborhood of these ones, which are all transitive. And this implies the existence of non-hyperbolic uh, robustly transitive diffeomorphisms. Okay? <coughs> so I have 10 minutes. I think it's enough. And so let me credit this argument to uh, Pujals and Sambarino, who gave a, a general criterion that we will try to reproduce in the afternoon to show robust transitivity. So why to stop here is because when we are here, what, what do we have? We have it's exactly the same picture, okay? Only that now the eigenvalue here, it, it became equal to one, okay? But the dynamics is the same. We still have a uh, attracting periodic point here, okay? And so we can claim that this one is transitive and moreover, that the unstable direction, the unstable foliation is minimal. Okay, so let me say some things, send some words to, about this diffeomorphism here, which I call f of t0. So f of t0 verifies the following. The first thing that it verifies is that it is partially hyperbolic, which is the context we are trying to, to work in. So uh, it is partially hyperbolic with center dimension one. So it's, it, and it uh, preserves a splitting of this form. And now, is, uh, when we were here, it was an OSOP, so this center direction was uniformly contracted, but now in the boundary, it's no longer uniformly contracted. But then the non-contraction, you can see it only at the fixed point where you have derivative equal to one. But now this, this became a, a genuine center direction. And then, since we, we are in this boundary here, I claim that this implies that the unstable foliation
is minimal. What does this mean? It means that every leaf of the foliation is dense. Okay? So this is not obvious, but it is an exercise. So you need to use that whatever neighborhood you want in the manifold, if you iterate forward enough, you will get there. And this, is, this follows from the fact that every point has a big stable manifold. Okay? So exercise. And here is the, the really key property that we will use, is that for every arc y in the strong stable foliation of length equal to 1, OK? Equal to one, what does it mean? So these neighborhoods have size epsilon, very small. So equal to one means much larger than the size of this neighborhood. So if you take any strong stable leaf, it might intersect this neighborhood where you made a perturbation, but it also intersects some, some place outside this neighborhood. And this means that it will contract in the center direction. Okay? So, for every arc of length 1, there exists a point x in y such that the derivative of f minus 1 is 0 along the center direction is larger than or equal than lambda 2, okay, so, which is to the minus 1, which is bigger than 1. <coughs> okay, I'm, I should have written here the minimal norm of the, of the derivative, but since it's dimension one, we don't care. Mm, so what, are, what is uh, the argument now to get a robust transitivity? What happens when we perturb the diffeomorphism F T0? So when we perturb the diffeomorphism F T0, this property is robust, okay? Because we, we have shown that being partially hyperbolic is an open property among diffeomorphisms. And the key thing is that this property is also an open property. Why is it so? Because as Sylvain showed yesterday, as you perturb the diffeomorphism, the stable manifolds remain close in compact sets. The center direction remains close to the, uh, to the previous uh, center direction, and the derivative is close because you are C1, C1 closed. And so this property will still hold. Maybe you have to change 1 by 2, and maybe you have to change lambda 1 is for something a little bit smaller. But this will still hold for perturbations. So this is robust. So the, now the, the problem is that this is not robust. Okay? But as, as in the case of transitivity, we, we cannot guarantee that you can keep transitivity, but you can keep epsilon density of the leaves. Okay? So again, by uh, continuous variation of the stable foliation and the unstable foliation, we get that uh, for every epsilon, bigger than zero, there exists a neighborhood u epsilon such that for every she in u epsilon, every strong stable leaf is epsilon dense. Okay? So this is just the continuous variation of the strong manifolds. And now, how, how, we con how do we conclude? So, we, we repeat the argument for the Anosov case, okay? We have the open set here, U, the open set here, B, 
And on the one hand, if we iterate forward the open set B, U, it contains an unstable arc. So as it iterate forward, it becomes epsilon dense. Because every unstable leaf, which is sufficiently large, it's epsilon dense. So it has an iterate. It's very large. I don't continue drawing it, but it's kind of epsilon dense. But now this B, it, but it, I draw it very, very big, but it's smaller than uh, epsilon. So how do we, we know that if we iterate it backwards, it, it will intersect here? So to do this, we will try to use this uh, information we have in the center that gives you uh, expansion in, the, in, in backward iterates. Okay, so as we iterate backwards, this open set B only grows in the stable direction. But the stable and unstable direction, as we said, don't complete the dimension. So we, we, we could miss the open set. But since we have a lot of points where the center direction is expanding, is uh, contracting for the future or expanding for the past, as you iterate backwards, you gain size in the center direction. Okay, so using property three, eventually we get a center stable disk of size epsilon, which will intersect this uh, manifold. Okay, so in the afternoon, I will try to generalize a little bit this argument to try to show that something in this, this uh, uh, like this will hold for an open and dense set of partially hyperbolic diffeomorphism. Okay, thank you.